This is for you, do not hide. So, you have an ample five minutes to dazzle this crowd. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a real pleasure to find you here. And many thanks for the Austrian presidency helping us organize this event. We just hit the 6,000 registers. I think we're, we're close to a record for this gathering that has become one of the most important gathering for research innovation and for innovation in general and digital in Europe. And I must say, in terms of participation topics, one of the biggest worldwide. So, and it's uh, the event where you come together, as Minister uh, said, to network, to discuss about future projects and uh, uh, future development of your businesses, and it's very important for us. We did organize a similar event in Vienna 20 years ago, three years after the adhesion of the Austrian uh, uh, into the Union. It was 20 years ago, and at that time, uh, it was, I think, the first event where we brought together stakeholders from the Esprit program, from ACT, from telematics, to one. We had 4,000 people, I think, at that time. We're 6,000 today, so we're progressing. But since then, many things happened in digital. Many things happened. Technology performance increased, I would say, a million times. The internet has changed our lives. Uh, data has become the key asset for uh, competitiveness worldwide. Digital transformation is one of the key trends in transforming our economy and society. Many things happened to which Europe has contributed. And I think it con has contributed, if I summarize it, more than what we think, more, when, more than what we read in the press, but certainly less than what Europe could have contributed given the weight of our economy, given the level of our education, the level of higher education, the wealth of our culture, etc. It has contributed less than what we think. Uh, the EU programs have contributed to the development of digital. It has contributed uh, in terms of bringing the technology uh, to its the highest, highest performance. Uh, it's in European programs that we developed technologies that enable us today to go down to 5 nanometer in technology nodes, to 3 nanometer when it comes to microelectronics. Uh, it's in these programs that we have uh, developed low power uh, technology, low power digital technology that enabled us to have the mobile phones, etc. And uh, EU programs have also uh, enabled us to make sure that digital is embedded in all our types of artifacts. It enables our industry to be uh, always at the forefront, and this is where Europe is good, of taking digital and embedding it in all types of products and services. In the use of digital, Europe is among the world leaders. And the production of and the supply of digital, Europe could do much better. Two areas where Europe could have done better. Achieving quicker a digital single market to enable our businesses to grow on a wider market than local markets, and you know that we're on it. It's the key priority of this current college, and we've put the legislative frameworks that we, the member states and us, think are very important and new stakeholders to make sure that digital single market is there. Another area where Europe could have done more to contribute more to the development of digital and digital transformation of our economy and society is investment. And investments, we still have a way to go. Have a way to go 20 years ago when we had the first conference in digital in Europe, in digital in Vienna, that event. 20 years ago, EU programs for digital, the three of them counted for around 900 million euros of investments. We were now discussing in the Commission the work program for 900 million euros per year, 900 million euros per year of investment and research innovation. We were counting now the work programs for 2020. We're working on this in digital. And I, if I sum up what we're doing on digital technologies altogether, including the investment, we do high forms computing in the joint undertaking that just started in Excel and our normal calls. I get to 1.3, 1.4 billion euros. If you take into account inflation, 
average 2% without taking out the 2% over 20 years. You see that we have not progressed on this side, although digital has tripled in terms of the digital supply has tripled in terms of market share. Digital has a very important impact on our economy and society. And in 20 years ago, we were 15. We're today 28 member states. So that means that there's a long way to go. And this is what motivated us to put a very ambitious proposal for investment in digital in the next framework programs and in the next multi-annual financial framework. The proposal of the Commission for investment to be done in Horizon Europe in digital, to be done in the new Digital Europe program, essential. Digital Europe program would enable us to be first movers in adopting the technologies and in making sure that we have the best capacities worldwide. The investment that we've foreseen on the basic infrastructure, the ministers talked about, the connectivity part and in media should enable us to double what we currently have in investments at EU level. It's essential because we've seen that throughout the years, for every euro that is spent at EU level, there are four euros spent in the public sector in the member state, and this has not changed. And almost 10 times the euro that is spent by the private sector. Public sector is important to attract private investment, and we saw it throughout the time. Now, this is our proposal. Horizon Europe, research and innovation. Digital Europe, uptake, deployment of the technology, making sure that we have the high performance computing capacities we need, the data sets for artificial intelligence, the testing environments for artificial intelligence, the best tools for cybersecurity, deployed in areas of public interest and supporting SMEs in their digital transformation and having the advanced digital skills. It comes in complement, as well as our investment in broadband and the infrastructure and our support to the content industry. This is our proposal. We think it's absolutely necessary for the future. And we hope that Council Parliament will follow us on this to make sure that digital transformation is a real success in Europe. Thank you. Oh, you forgot something. Right, just stay there one second, just one moment, because I like to just have a moment with, with. First of all, thank you very much for saying we were 15, we're now 28, and not saying we'll become 27. So. As a Brit, that was quite nice to hear that, <laughs> got to say. Um, secondly, thank you very much for putting the spotlight on SMEs. This is what I always say. I'm sure I've got some in the house from when I was last in Vienna. SMEs are the backbone of the European economy, no joke. So very, very critical that you put them under the spotlight. And thank you also, you talked about HPC, you talked about the joint undertaking, and you talked about the role of industry. And these are all areas that we're gonna tackle in all the different sessions. So I thank you for being so comprehensive and uh, I look forward to having a little bit of a chat with you shortly. And yes, don't leave that there because I might take it. A warm round of applause, please, for this gentleman. Thank you very much. So again, and I have asked our speakers now to stick to a nice round five minutes so we have a little bit of time for discussion and a little bit of time even in this first session for your input via Slido. Could you now please give a very warm welcome to Willem Molterer. He is Managing Director of the European Fund for Strategic Investments and he's going to offer his opening thoughts. Thank you very much. Hi. Good morning, everybody. I try to stick to the five minutes. Where do we stand? I think this is important uh, before going into the details of further steps economically. Even if we have quite a positive development, what, me, what scares me is in Europe we have an extremely slow productivity growth. We have a weak innovation capacity. We have a big gap in RDI expenditures compared to, peer, to peers. And one explanation is we have still a huge digital gap. We should tackle this offensively. Trying to close the gaps, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen means investment and investing. We have done in the European Investment Bank a survey about the sheer amounts that's necessary to close the gap, financing-wise. And we are considering, for instance, in the RDI sector, an increase, a necessary increase of expenditures per annum up to 2030 by 110 billion euro a year 
simply to achieve the 3% targets, but to be quite blunt, others are discussing already the 4% target. We need some 50 to 80 billion to close the digital gap infrastructure-wise, means on the broadband investment specifically in the rural areas. And if you add what's necessary to achieve the climate target, which is all, all, also roughly 160 billion, we are talking about 400 billion per annum up to 2030 to close the gaps. Third, what is needed? For me, it's clear, first of all, also on this digital area, we need a strong policy framework. And the strong policy framework, ladies and gentlemen, it's not just about regulation, it's also about planning. And I tell you some of the experiences we have in the European Investment Bank, for instance, investing into digital needs planning and needs a strong comprehensive planning capacity, also a strong capacity to implement it. Second, it needs a new partnership, we have heard already, to close the financial gap that's totally impossible with taxpayers' money just. This new partnership means public and private also in financing, in financing these gaps. And to close the, investment, uh, the innovation gap, it needs a new partnership between business and research. Here we are way too shy to open the doors from both sides, from business and the research sector. Third, what is needed is an innovative way of financing. We have heard already the plans. Khalil, thank you of the Commission for the next MFF period. That's okay. We need more money out of the EU budget, also via grants. But what is at least as important, secondly, is to, con to continue with initiatives to close or to, to finalize single market initiatives like digital market, like capital market. In some countries of the European Union, capital market is totally unknown, and without capital market financing, we cannot close the gap. And third, innovative financing means also to develop and deploy financial instruments. Financial instruments means to use the strength of the grants money with the strength of the financial engineering, for instance, via EAB and the famous FC, the Juncker Plan, is doing exactly that. What we try to do is to achieve a higher impact and a higher leverage out of one single euro taxpayers' money to have the, both the, the, the utmost impact on investment and innovation. We do this practically already since three years, thanks to the strong partnership Commission and EIB. By the way, EIB, European Investment Bank, it's your bank. It's owned by the 28 member states. And for EIB, it's a key priority to invest into digital and into innovation. We have two companies here. Now, why are you will hear something about the EIB involvement in financing and AVL list? We are also financing this company in doing more on the research side. Also combining investment on RDI into energy efficiency, electric vehicles, but on the other hand, using, using digital. What is our priorities? First and foremost, skills and education. I just can confirm what I have heard so far also by the minister. Second, as an example, artificial intelligence, simply to try to, to close the gap that exists via increasing financing in this. Third, it's cybersecurity and everything what is around cybersecurity, because this is one of the European strengths that we should that we should use more efficiently. And last but not least, fourth, infrastructure, because infrastructure needs investment specifically in the rural areas. But I see infrastructure also in developing a 5G infrastructure. We have financed, for instance, Nokia and Ericsson exactly in this direction with a huge amount of money. But infrastructure means also investment into supercomputing, because this is part of an, a, a, a comprehensive infrastructure. I close. I appreciate very much the discussion here, but I would broaden this discussion with the people of Europe and globally because what we are talking about is a societal challenge and not a challenge of industry or a challenge of researchers just. Thank you. Thank you. I will. 
I will, uh, I will ask you to take a seat so that I can have some good time with you in just a moment. But thank you also because you very nicely spotlighted cybersecurity. That's a whole other area that we're going to be talking about tomorrow morning. We've also got a Facebook chat on that tomorrow at 11.30. And of course, supercomputing. And I think obviously the red thread through all of this that we can see is this is societal. And sometimes I think from a stakeholder point of view, we're all up there in, in the box. And this really is about societal transformation. So that needs to be absolutely at the core of all of our discussions. So thank you very much for your comprehensive uh, presentation. Now, our next speaker for this opening panel is a gentleman called Helmut List. He's CEO and owner of AVL List. This is the world's largest independent company for the development, for the simulation, for the testing technology of powertrains, for passenger cars, trucks, and large engines, and all sorts of other things, not least, of course, in the domain of autonomous driving. So could you please give this gentleman a very warm round of applause? Thank you very much. That was an energetic spring up onto this stage. Thank you, sir. The next five minutes are yours. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to address some examples of uh, where our company was involved or is involved in, in ICT and digital as a key uh, element and the key approach for solving uh, tasks for industry and societal ch challenges. I'd like to start out just to mention that societal challenges like global warming, air quality, future production and creating jobs, mobility demand by the citizens, with new multi-model approaches and new services, these all need new key approaches how to create future systems. Future systems that are safety and security critical, uh, that use cloud computing and high performance computing, uh, autonomous driving, others are typically applications. Energy efficiency and energy sources are key and environmental protection, of course, goes with all that. Uh, in all these areas, digital, uh, it is impossible to approach these tasks without the vast spectrum of digital uh, technology and many instruments that go with it. Uh, when you look at the steps of, of uh, of value chain steps, so to speak, uh, in the area of, uh, of uh, industry, let's say in the area of digitalization, to keep it short. Uh, we talk about, of course, equipment that's needed for all the components, the components themselves, electric components and packages, and then the area of embedded systems, including artificial intelligence, and then further uh, solutions, complete solutions, complete solutions that use integrated systems consisting of sensors, embedded software, uh, and also control algorithms and uh, actuators connected, connected to another via Internet of Things. So these applications are key to tackle this environment, this societal challenges. And when you look at these different steps, we see a doubling from 2016 to 2025 for all the elements uh, I mentioned uh, of components, equipment, and also embedded electronics. However, when you come to complete solutions, you see a, not a doubling and not threefold, it's tenfold. We go a volume high up when it comes to complete solutions. And complete solutions uh, is not only important for big companies, it's also important for medium-sized companies because highly specialized medium-sized companies need to, to integrate their approach to very specific targets, to very targeted customers worldwide. And so this... Uh, a solution approach which uses a lot of software, embedded software and other software are key 
in order to be important. So I would like to really recommend that uh, comparing we have on the one side, of course, the component industry. On the other side, we have a broad spectrum of industries that is looking at the whole solution, which uses a lot of software in order to, uh, to, uh, to achieve the goal. And software is really a key element with all the artificial intelligence and integrated approach, as I mentioned before. Uh, at AVL, we have, uh, uh, to keep it short, uh, we have early on uh, set as a goal to integrate uh, simulation and testing and all the elements so to give the engineers who develop vehicles, engines or electric powertrains uh, an integrated environment. And this integrated environment uh, is very valuable for the speed of development and for the quality of development and, missed, uh, and uh, achieving complex areas. We had the opportunity to coordinate three major programs uh, of the Excel program uh, from 2009 to 2019 with typically uh, 50 to 80 million per th every three years in the area of cost-efficient methods and processes for safety-critical and security-critical embedded systems, tool and data integration, and highly automated safe and autonomous systems. So very broad, important areas. And I can say these programs, which were typically coordinated 50 to 60 partners of Europe, uh, allowed us and many of our partners in the program to really address all these topics and to proceed very well. In our case, it was an approach to enter successfully with a specific contributions, the area of, automotive dri of automated driving, where I think it's important that each partner who involves has specific contribution to give. With specific contributions, we were well accepted worldwide. You get into the network with many of the key players, and that is key for success. So uh, I think these programs were extremely important to us. Yeah, for me, this is uh, what I wanted to get across. We need a focus on software, beside the component focus, and we need to really integrate along those lines with the artificial intelligence, Internet of Things. So digitalization of that kind is a key element in our case. And of course, it's also part of the larger picture of Industry 4.0, where we look at the whole chain uh, we're involved in to make sure we are effective and efficient and progress on a, with digital speed. Thank you. Don't disappear, sir. There, take your time, take your dough. Wow, you are leaping like a gazelle. He is leaping like a gazelle. Please, he's going he's gonna to sue the minister if he falls. That's the problem. It's the Austrian presidency, or maybe the commission. I don't know, whoever. Um, thank you very much. Also, what I liked about that is, and I think, again, this will come up over the course of the next few days, this idea of testing, of simulation, of demo projects. It can be complicated sometimes, I think, with EU funding to build in that possibility to fail to learn, you know, to see where it goes along the way. So it's a very, very interesting area for discussion. Thank you very much. And also the focus on the importance of software. Um, and I'm sure that will be something that comes up again and again. So um, I'm going to get off here. Remy doesn't want me on here. This is not my area. I'm going here. See, this is my area. This is my playground, okay? I do not touch the podium. So, we have a penultimate speaker, and our penultimate speaker is Pierre Chawan. He is project director at Navia, pioneer and specialist in the autonomous vehicle market, assisting cities and private sites in improving their transport offer with autonomous, driverless, and electric solutions. But, before I welcome him, I would like us to just play a short video, please. Enjoy.
clap, I think. <laughs> Welcome. Please take, do you know, that, just to say, please take it, that actually made me wish for a remake of The Italian Job. When I, saw, when I saw the little cars going down the tiny street, I thought, how fantastic to have a great car chase. So that is what I wish you to do next, please, in your next video. Thank you very much. The next five minutes tops are yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Austrian Minister, our European Representative, Austrian Pre Presidency. I would like to share with you our experience on digital impact and challenges Europe is facing from our perspective and our market. Two words about our story. Navia is a pioneer and leader in autonomous vehicle market. We build autonomous, driveless vehicles to assess cities around the world in improving their mobility offer. We started in 2014 in France with five people, and in one year later, we put on the market the first autonomous shuttle in the world. And it was in Europe. Now we are more than 250 persons with two factories, building three cars per week. We sold more than 100 vehicles, as you've seen, running in 20 countries, and more than 300,000 people were transported in our shuttles. They used them in airports, heart of cities, university campus, and industrial sites, and many other places. We are not more in experimental phases, testing how a vehicle can run alone. We are the only company commercializing a wide range of autonomous vehicles, from shuttles to robotaxi. And again, it's in Europe. Mobility is the backbone of our cities and their developments. Cities are building multi-model solutions from trains, subways, trams, buses, shared electric cars, and many other solutions to move people around easily. When all tier one player car manufacturers and especially high-tech giants are facing each other to create sophisticated autonomous cars, Navia took the opposite way to build a digital mobility solution for our cities, not driving very fast, but running extremely safe. A new mobility solution that can integrate easily in this multimodal transport system, solving three major issues, pollution, congestion, and space. More traditional cars create pollution. We are building electric cars. Of course, electric cars, if used individually, will not solve traffic congestion. We are building shared public transport. And space, by using transport, public transport, from one end to the other, we do not need as much as parking lots. We can save these parking lots for other living usage. We did not create a car. We opened a new market segment with a new type of solution. And this most certainly played a major role in new mobility revolution we are living today. The challenge was raised with the help of people that believed in us and in our vision. And above all, with the help of European Investment Bank and Horizon 2020 programs that is supporting us. For today, we are facing totally different challenges, not technological, but more legal, social, and financial. Legal is one of the major breaks we are facing. We need a legal framework to put autonomous vehicles on open roads, and this in different countries, even if in Europe, even in Europe and it takes between three to eight months to have an exemption to run one vehicle on a specific road. Social, we have to think differently and accept to leave our cars at home and take public transport, public and shared transport. And above all, investment is the third challenge to help us to keep healthy breaths, support R&D, innovation, until the return of in, on, on investment. Thus, if we can deploy AV quicker in the European market, more people will use it, and faster the market will be opened up. Outside Europe, some countries are making it e even more difficult to homologate our vehicles, and we can tend to think that it's not under safety and security reason, but more to delay Europe industry to take the lead and moving fast in this market. Europe was, in many areas, leader in major digital disruption that changed our future. The internet was somehow born in Europe, but had quickly shifted 
to Western countries that concentrate now the most powerful companies in the world. The mobile industry was somehow led in Europe and raised European champions, but now is shifting also outside Europe to Eastern side. AV, autonomous vehicles, is the latest disruption that will change the future of mobility. If Europe wants to stay at the forefront of digital market, we need to support this industry and we need to battle on the value and the service approach rather than the large scale approach. Autonomous vehicles for public transport are providing Europe this unique opportunity. Navia and European industry are much in advance, so why not keeping this European strength in a single digital voice? Thank you. Just quickly, just one. Yeah, I know, it's, it, it's the second person. Did you see that? We nearly <laughs> dropped. There is a stair here. There is a step. One quick question for you. I like that when you say we didn't create a car, you opened a new market segment. I think those were your words. Very quick question, because I moderate quite a lot for the road people. Are you in, I know you're in conversation with the telecoms people, and I know you're in conversation with the car, the automotive industry. Are you talking to the road people and to the local authorities? Of course. Of yep. course. We are working together to build build a kind of legal framework, but unfortunately we are doing it country by country. What would be interesting is to have a single homologation in Europe and to work with all the stakeholders to bring this and open the market. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. More in a moment. Please take a seat. You. you may give him a round of applause. Thank you. So we have a last speaker and then we're going to have a delightful whistle-stop tour of the subject with these good people. So our last speaker, last but not least, as we always say, is Pekka Ala Pitila, who is chairman of the board of packaging company Hutamaki and media company Sonoma, and he is also chairman of the European Commission High Level Group on Artificial Intelligence. A very warm round of applause for this gentleman, please. I hope I did not butcher the Finnish language there. No, actually, it's a very difficult name, and you did very well. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, everyone. Um, according to Robert Solov, the Nobel Prize winner in economics, the growth in innovation in dense nations is stemming for one third combinedly to the injections, additional injections of capital, and then the additional or increments in labor force. And two-thirds of the growth in innovation in dense nations is stemming from the capability to apply the latest technology. And that's the reason why this kind of event we have today, the topics we discuss on digitalization, and in the use of artificial intelligence is of crucial importance. But where are we today in Europe? If we look at the business to consumer market, it doesn't look too good. And in the name of intellectual honesty, you could all, almost say that that market is not lost, but it's played so well by the US and Chinese that there are only marginal elements for Europeans then to build and catch and create momentum. There are examples and there are more to come, thanks to my data, thanks to GDPR, creating a different kind of a playing field. But there's a huge advantage uh, with the giants in China and in the US in B2C. Business to business market is equally important. Actually, when we look at the value which can be extracted by AI in applying that in business to business vis-a-vis -vis the business to consumer, the business to business market is two-thirds and business to consumer one-third. So the bigger potential is there. And Europe, by its very nature, the industrial base is more business to business. And in, in applying AI, you need to know the substance. You need to know the context. And therefore, it is more fragmented. It is not that easy to concur with big platforms, albeit that Alibaba and Amazon already today have done a lot on the B2B platforms as well. 
But then there's a third market, which is uh, citizen, uh, public to citizens, public to people market. And there, Europe has also a major position to build on and create services for the people, but also create services and foundations where from public and commercial applications can be expanded. If we then look at the states, the degree of digitalization, and according to McKinsey, the digital readiness index, US is at the level of 78%, Asia in grosso modo is at the 56 and Europe in 51. So we need to catch up there and we need to catch up fast. If we look at the AI specific investments indirectly and we count the VC investments in US and in Europe, we count the AI related unicorns in US and Europe, and then the corporate investments in AI in US and Europe. The ratio is 8 to US and 1 to Europe. So therefore, what has been already spoken and, uh, and underscored today, the importance of investment, is, is of paramount importance. But Europe has also strongholds. We have the business-to-business -business market and a lot of substance knowledge, and there is no substitution for that. We have very functioning uh, public to citizen markets. We have great companies who have already applied AI in many areas, particularly in business to business. We have increasing number of high tech hubs in Europe, which is indicating that the speed of diffusion of AI use is accelerating. We are not necessarily the best in uh, AI research when it comes to the uh, machine learning, deep learning, but we are very good in robotics, we are good in symbolics, we are good in reasoning. And the number of STEM uh, PhD researchers or candidates in Europe is twice the number in the US. So we have a lot of, lot of talent which is diving into these topics. But it's not only what we do, it's how we do. And therefore, the way of working is important part of the recipe of success. And there are three things I would like to take up. Because we are a bit behind, we need to gain the speed. There is no substitution for speed, creating the opportunity to create the momentum. And if you make some mistakes, if you are fast, you can make the midterm course corrections and be back on the track. And you will learn faster, which is crucial here. So we need to have a speed, but that is for long haul. As Khalil said, it's a long way, and that means that we should think 10 years ahead. So speed, if we could be one step ahead in critical areas of our competing economical systems every month for 10 years, that would be a great momentum which we would have gained. But thirdly, we need to do that one step ahead per month for 10 years. We need to do it consistently so that the Commission, the member states, and the companies and researchers, and also our people, citizens, that they come together and create strong public, private, people, research partnerships where we will then find a way to make Europe uh, something where the AI is bringing the well-being and, and, and safe environment for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, indeed. Please, come. Don't, nab, don't steal my seat, if I might ask you, but you can steal the seat at the end. So, okay. Now, Let's see, ladies and gentlemen, how we go, because there isn't a tremendous amount of time, and these good people have come here to sort of headline this session, and I would like to have some proper time to have a chat with them, so forgive me if I don't get to Slido. Let's just see a little bit how things are. Um, I just want to come to you first, Willem. I mean, this is sort of quite random, but I think what was helpful about all of those opening um, presentations is that there really was uh, identification of where the EU is strong and where it's less 
And I'm very much into not just, which is absolutely critical, we should be doing this, we could be doing this, but examples of how. How do we do it? How do these people, stakeholders, engage in doing this? You talked clearly about this business research gap. And you yourself said, industry, we need industry in there. Anything else you want to say about this? Why is this conversation not going on? Are we all too busy? Are we all too protective? Are we all too... Why do you think industry? I'll start, I'll start with you, sorry, and then I'll come to you, Willem. Why is this not happening? How could we make it happen better? Well, uh, I think... Uh, oh, I, I do ladies... But my fault. I was a rubbish moderator. I said you first, and then I just went to this lady. Who would like to go first? You ladies go. first. Thank you. Thank you. Go for it. Thank you. So, um, what I think is, and what has been mentioned a few times, is we need speed. And uh, speed in decision-making processes. And me coming from companies with 15 years as a CEO, of course, companies have more possibilities of speedy decision-making processes. So if I look now, uh, uh, we're taking the European Council's uh, presidency, I had more insight, I think, and very quick insight in how the decision-making processes are. And here, I must say, we need to become quicker and easier uh, in Europe. And this is our decision-making processes are not made by somebody outside, but they are created by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the big challenge is to redesign and reinvent ourselves again and create something which is new, which is more speedy, because we are competing with Asia and the US. Mainly. Okay, so how do we do that? We know we need to. Do you, do you, in your heart, think it's possible? Do you think it's possible? Do you see it's possible? How do we do it? Because EU level, it's not the most flexible beast, so it's, it's tricky. Any real concrete thoughts of how we do that? Well, the, the, um, they're good examples, I think, and this uh, example of subsidiarity principle, which I want to, to, put, to highlight here, is really important. I think we need Europe to concentrate more on the topics of the big topics, where we need more Europe, but in the smaller topics, leave these to the countries. Okay. What has been indicated, what we need, is a clear message in this site. So okay. we want this decision. The, the problems are, and the, the challenges are big. And the tendency is, when the challenges are really big, people tend to do micromanagement. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happening in big companies, and it's happening on the European basis. So the one topic would be to concentrate on the big topics to solve, mm -hmm. uh, because what we heard is he needs a framework. Huh? Mm -hmm. He needs a framework mm -hmm. to do auto autonomous mm -hmm. driving sure. in Europe and not decide in each country individually. Mm -hmm. This needs some, is something we need to do commonly. Mm -hmm. okay. But there are a lot of topics we can get uh, loose of and we can decide not to solve on the European level. I think, and, and thank you for that, and this could be a discussion um, in a pub for days and days and days with a glass of wine, for sure, because it's very much at the heart of, I think, what's going on with all the difficulties in the member states at the moment, not least my own, this relationship, and that's critical, I think, for Europe's future, and you put your finger on it. What does Europe do? What's that added dimension? Where do we leave it to the member states? How do they fit it together? Uh, I come to you, so this whole relationship you talked about, that, that ooh, there's a little bit of mistrust, research, business, how do we make that better? Well, first of all, I think uh, the Minister is right, speed matters. Second, size matters. Specifically in this area, we shouldn't talk about uh, millions, just we have to talk about billions. Third, Europe matters, because sometimes people from abroad do not understand why we discuss an Austrian solution, a German solution, and even within Austria, one of the governors want to try to explain there is a difference between an Alpine Valley in the, in the Bundesland X compared to the Bundesland Y. This crazy nonsense. We need this European dimension. And third, opening doors between private and public. You have mentioned uh, this. This is for me key, which means also universities. And on that, and business, by the way, my key experience is we, should, we are way too shy to talk about innovation because we are doing this just from the risk per perspective and we are discussing risk for many, many years and then we miss the chances and opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the key. Be more ready to take risk and be open for innovation from both sides, by the way. Mm -hmm. This is not something for the researchers, just. That's also something for the business people. 
Okay, and just to, just jumping to that, I will come to you, Pekka, because it was interesting. You were very, very clear what we're doing gloriously or well, and what we're you know where we're lagging, and, and you were very specific in that. And I think you used the words at the end, stronghold. You talked about Europe having a great substance knowledge. You talked about the number of PhDs. I know that there are lots of conversations about how do you keep those people with that knowledge here. Do we want to? I don't know. Do we want them to go and come back? Um, but what, what do you think? Do you think that those people with this knowledge who are working in AI, um, do you think they have that, that, that sensibility to be linking up with industry, to be going to find the funding? Because I've done stuff on FET flag, uh, partnerships with flagships before, and I've had the comment made, you've got all these brilliant people, but they don't think about getting out of that brilliant ivory tower and making those links. What's your feeling there in this whole relationship between researchers, business, policy makers? There is a kind of a magic in creating a secret source for success, creating this positive spiral. That's it. And uh, creating that pos positive spiral actually needs a regulation, which we have discussed, which gives the frame that encourages to invest. When there is a encouragement for investment, then you can actually employ and recruit those great STEM researchers which are innovating, and then there are smaller companies coming in, bigger ones see the opportunities, even companies outside Europe will see European market leading, as was the case during the mobile telecommunication side. So it's, it's, there's no one single thing. It is a, a multiple things which, and they, I don't remember who said we need to do the planning. We need to have the big yes, picture right. in mind. No single thing will make it. It's the multiple things we need to do consistently on an everyday manner, understanding the big picture, and then the magic will take place. And there's no priority? You know, there's so much to think about. Funding, infrastructure, knowledge. Is there a priority? But you, actually, where you need to start, you need to start from substance. So autonomous uh, vehicle is a good example. That is a subs substance matter. So let's think, what should we do to make autonomous vehicles as the market, as the platform, as the ecosystem, which is winning in Europe? And then you ask 360 degree. You ask from the commission, you ask from the member states, you ask from the researchers and the business, what are the things which would constitute the most competitive, the most lucrative environment to do this. Mm -hmm. And then you would have not one or two, you would have 10, maybe 15. Good ideas first year, second year that would be 50, and then it would go on. Mm -hmm. So it's the point of departure which should be holistic and then have the courage to have a dialogue. Okay, I like that. And you know, because you have such a lovely voice to listen to, it just all sounds so easy, doesn't it? I love it. You do this, you ask what environment to create, you have holistic, and then you find the steps to it. I like that. But you feel very sure, and sometimes that's very lovely to hear, because there's so many histrionics around Europe at the moment that it's, it's nice to hear that and to hear the practical steps that can go there. Just let me go um, a moment. I'd like to ask a question from an EU point of view, and I'd like to come back to this testing idea because it links to this issue of risk. Um, I'll ask this first, and then I'll come to you, sir. So you talked about letting your engineers do testing because this is all part of advancing in this domain. It's all part of Europe being the forerunner with all of this substance knowledge. Um, do you think that there is enough focus on that? Because the buzzword in Europe is R&I. We need this. Is there enough focus on how we enable failure or learning in the process mm -hmm. in this domain? Testing is one aspect. But as important as testing is also math simulation. And more important than that, both of them is to integrate it, to have a very fast interaction between math simulation and testing and create new levels of fast development. And this is based on digital competence and uh, of making mathematical models, of integrating data, of combining models with each other. When today we have, for instance, the task to meet a future Euro 7 uh, emission regulation or CO2 regulation, uh, it means we have to combine many different 
technologies like, electri like electric drives with sensors, mm -hmm. with also in some cases with internal combustion engines or with also fuel cells. It's a high complexity. Mm -hmm. With a lot high complexity is a challenge society that it contains many degrees of freedom which can really completely freshly put together. That's the other side, the positive side. Mm -hmm. And in new systems we're talking about today, we integrate all these elements with embedded software, with artificial intelligence, the different uh, components and systems we test in our laboratories are connected by Internet of Things, and everything together allows a much faster, more comprehensive, and in-depth, different type of, of okay. development process, much faster. We see today in traditional areas a fast evolution of technology, mm -hmm. much faster than a year ago. Even yep. in, you say, uh, uh, long time internal combustion engines. Mm -hmm. We have about three times to four times the speed of development mm -hmm. than we had 10 sure. years ago. Remember okay. that. What's yes. happening? Digitalization, the way I described it, is pervasing everything. Mm -hmm. The same is true. We are now addressing very fresh and intensively oh. fuel cells. Mm -hmm. Why do we enter that now? Okay. We entered it about 10 years ago, really. Mm -hmm. And we have a new approach, we have a new approach in combining simulation and testing okay. and discover things which were not optimized before. So I, we believe we can enhance it. I think, I think it's very... Digitalization uh, is key here. Absolutely. I think it's very interesting what you say. I think it should be the title of his first novel, Many Degrees of Freedom. And I think that's a very nice notion. And the speed is critical. We're a long way from the quarter yes. telephone that you somehow managed to spend four times a quarter of the time on and annoy everybody. I like that. But um, just to come back and to link, to link these, you talked about you know, investment, the huge funding gap. You talked about some of the specific things that Europe is doing. I mentioned some of the initiatives. I mentioned what's coming up in the next MFF for discussion. Um, I always like to ask this when I have a commission. You have all these stakeholders, you get a bit grumpy and say, well, we'd love to, and you say all this, but then it's impossible because it's not simplified. And you don't allow us freedom, and we need to take those risks, but we have to have an endpoint and monitor it and prove. Honestly, from yourself, when you stick your head on the pillow at night and the commission side, do you think you're in the right path to really, to really push this forward at the degree of speed, given the competition that is out there from the US, from China, that we need? You said, and I love it, it's kind of an understatement, many things have happened in digital over the last 20 years. I love that, that's fabulous. Do you think that the EU is optimally doing what it can to help fix some of these challenges? I know that's unfair, but hey, you are from the Commission, that's my question. Yeah, well, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know whether your question was precise enough. But the, the question it, precisely is, is, is the, the EU, EU doing is what the, it yeah. should, or can you honestly say we should be doing a bit more there? Yeah, is the EU, the EU is all of us. True that. So but start with this. You are right. And I would like to insist on this, because that we're all in it, that's the issue. And the, um, now, uh, the, the EU uh, acts on the, the whole, uh, all what policy instruments are. You know, regulation, I think we, we need to be faster, I totally agree. We need to focus on the essential things that would enable us to develop a single market and essential things where scale matters, totally agree. And uh, there, I think we, we, we need to progress on this and, uh, and uh, make sure that uh, we do act in a way that uh, we, you don't need to deal with 27 different regulations when it comes to autonomous vehicle in the future of 28. The, uh, but th though that's an area where we're acting, it takes time. You're, you're definitely right. Uh, we could act quicker, and we know we could act quicker. And, where we see the political will from the member states and us to act quicker, we're able to do it. We wanted to have a high performance computing initiative. We initiated the idea mm -hmm. uh, last year, and in less than seven months, we were able to put in place a joint undertaking with member states, EU support, and industry support to come back to the areas of high performance computing so essential for the whole digital value chain. In seven months, we were able to put that on the table. It's a record.
I was about to say, is it record? It's you a said record. It. It's a, it's you a record. Home, it's a record for previous joint undertaking. It took us two years. So, okay. I mean, we, we can learn from this experience to do that. We can act fast, and speed is essential. Totally agree. So, on regulation, we could act fast. On investment, we could act fast. We need to make sure that we, we constantly simplify our procedure. We did a, a last survey for H2020 uh, on all stakeholders, including those that have applied to EU programs and those that have got money from EU programs. And for the first time, for the first time in all EU program history, simplification did not come as the first requirement. So we're making progress, <laughs> and it's good okay. to mention it. All right. it. It came after, what came as first is now, of course, oversubscription. Because budgets are tight in comparison with the demand that we see. Sure. And it's true that there we have also a way to go in terms of focusing what we can do at your level, so the focus, and in terms also, hopefully, of increasing the budget to be able to satisfy the demand. Uh, the, uh, th that's what we're working on, and we're, where we need to touch local and regional uh, uh, actors on the ground, SMEs in particular, we try to work as close as possible with the member states, with the regions, to make sure that EU support is channeled in a way that is efficient, that enables them to act on a European market, and to make sure that we are complementary and work together. And on the big picture, it's the, you know, it's what we have developed with time is what Fekka was mentioning, i.e. getting a global picture through public-private partnerships, set up roadmaps with industry, with the academic community, build the, bring these roadmaps to our reflection with the member states to make sure we have a shared vision all together. Okay. And invest together when we need to, build bottom-up processes for organic growth of, of uh, businesses, SMEs, startups, in a, uh, uh, and have a global picture as much as we can. We did it on electronic components and systems, on the embedded systems. We did it in high forms computing now. We're doing it in artificial intelligence and hope that this afternoon we'll be talking about how we're building together a coordinated plan with the member states so that we don't double, that we leave to the member states what they need okay. to do at the level. We're progressing. We're progressing. Okay. Has the EU done Last what point. it can? Go on. Just yes. what? Because that was your question. Where did we <laughs> fail? Investment is important since this is the, uh, the, the session. And I mentioned those figures are important. Just to be, to be clear, I mean, the, we have not, uh, the EU programs for this area have barely progressed in 20 years. And if we think that with that, we can still win the digital transformation race, we're wrong. I want to be blunt with everyone. I don't think Europe will be able to make it. If we don't get the support we need, 20 years ago, I went to the Parliament, to the European Parliament to negotiate. I was still a young uh, functionaire, negotiate the fifth framework program or sixth framework program for research. And in the Parliament, they told me digital is the technology of the past. We did propose an increase in budget. We didn't get it. If this time we don't get it, I want to get this through. If we don't get it, I don't think we. I think we'd be having a big risk for the future. Thank you. So Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and yes, do, do you eat, sleep, drink digital? Sorry? Do you eat, sleep, drink digital? Of course. Okay, good. <laughs> Just to make sure. That he's... And everything else digital and, as well. <laughs> and everything else. And you're right, it is about investment. I have taken investment in the very, very broadest sense here. But just before I come to you, sir, because I'm not going to leave you out, you just wanted Pekka to make to add a comment here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is evident, I'm not opening this up because there's just simply not time for this. Let me just let you know that if you want to speak to these good people, there's a coffee break coming up, you can. Uh, if you need to speak to the commission, it's the blue lanyards, is that right? Blue, white, there are people here, okay. So anything that might have come in on Slido will be curated, all right? That's very, very important for me to tell you. Pekka. Thank you for giving the time for comment. Um, me not being working in the EU Commission before, and I'm not even now because it's the uh, high-level expert group which is independent, but immersed to the way and many vehicles which we have. Two comments I would like to kind of compliment or add. One, I think that there are more vehicles than we think. And that, that, is, that has been a surprise to me. Those vehicles are not necessarily 
fully developed, so there's more content to be developed, but there are vehicles which we can use. So that calls for cooperation and much deeper dialogue. Mm -hmm. Probably dialogue with the Commission and Member States, I, I cannot take a stand, that is probably already there, but with the businesses, I would tend to think that we could make a major improvement there. Mm -hmm. And now when the public-private partnership goes to the next stage where we would need to work more intensely, then the demand for communication is very different. And I don't, I still yet to see the organization or company who does good enough work in communication. So I would kindly suggest that the Commission could do a bit of work in promoting those things you already have and, and, and creating the dialogue. Because there, there's a lot to work I think, on. I think it's a very good point. I only know just to say that from having run um, big comms campaigns for the Commission in different sectors for 10 years, you have some splendid initiatives, projects, information, fabulous, really nicely done, very concrete. It's the getting it out there. Now, I know you need some help getting it out there from the media, from the member states, but I, I, I do hear your point about promoting it, promoting more, that there's stuff there. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. I just want to come to you, because I don't want to leave you silent there, like, like the Sphinx. An important issue with all of this investing in the future. The red thread, as we said, you all said it. There are key issues. It's about societal transformation, big challenges. We heard air pollution. We heard climate change. All sorts of things. Um, we're not just talking about putting a load of gadgets on the market. So. I think you said that a lot of people were behind your project. I think you, you used a nice word to say you, you could thank. There are a lot of people involved, I think, in, in, in the success of yours. Um, where does the consumer sit in this? It's all very well for us to talk. We need the digital skills. People need to be accompanied in that. What about market uptakes of critical things? How do people understand digital? Because I think at the moment there's a, a lot of, ah, and there's a lot of, ah. So what was the experience with you? Where does the consumer sit in all of this future we're investing in, sir? The person, the citizen. Well, we can see it. I heard a lot of words, speed, size, scalability, taking risk, encouraging, and investing. And this is very important. So everything was almost said. And we need to keep in mind what you highlighted, the user experience, the consumer himself. That's why what I highlighted, what we highlighted is not, we are not building cars, we are building solutions for the consumers. Okay. And this is totally different approach. Where we can see in the US, they are building cars for individual usage. And they are putting it on the market before any legal framework. And they are advancing very quickly. In, in, uh, in Asia, we are thinking about the large scale, putting in place a totally wide reproduction autonomous vehicle to deliver it everywhere, independent of the use. What we are thinking of is that we have a, a European Union that is strong, and we are building a better place for consumer regarding the digital market, regarding the mobility, and regarding the usage. So consumer use, sees technology as a wow event. They see Google cars as a wow event. But when they go into our shuttles, one minute, one minute and a half after, they take out their smartphones, and they go to their usage, their habits. So this is the most important thing for us, is that we put technology aside and we use complex AI, we use complex technology to bring a simple usage where technology is aside but is bringing a value and a service. Okay, and I think you say, because we've heard the word solutions, complete solutions, you talked a lot, but solutions, I know in a slightly different context, but value. I know that when we l discuss the digital citizen, which is one of the parallel sessions, all of these issues about what is it doing for you, your well-being, your life, e-health, e-government, e-education, that's absolutely critically uh, at the fore. Um, Willem, I'm going to come to you, and then I nearly need to wrap, so I'm going to ask each of you for a last word and the last word is going to be I think there are some school children at this event do we have school children in this room now have I been ill-informed 
Do we have very young people? No? Okay, well, we don't. Okay, well, I won't ask you that question. I'll ask you another one. Let me please come to you first. You wanted to add something on this issue. Thank you. Well, I think one of the elements that drives innovation is to support startups because they are thinking totally different. They are really solution driven and they are not providing a single idea. And this comprehensive thinking, this holistic thinking, this post silo thinking is something that matters. Therefore, as the more startups we have, the better. Second, that's our experience. We have financed 62 projects on digital over the last two years just. Uh, 40 of them are FC supported, means guarantee supported, mm -hmm. to take higher risk. And what is crystal clear for me, no solution without digital impact. You cannot solve the climate issue without digital. You cannot solve the CO2 reduction without digital. You cannot do the health system without digital. And this is of utmost importance. Whatever happens, Digital has to be in because the alternative is digitalize or marginalize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think this very principle is something I love to see way more in any policy discussion, but also in discussion with mm -hmm. business people. And last but not least, mm -hmm. do not underestimate the advisory need for the SMEs. Mm -hmm. If it is true mm -hmm. that the SMEs mm -hmm. are the backbone mm -hmm. of our mm -hmm. economy, mm -hmm. They need support mm -hmm. beyond financing. Yeah. And advising them properly is a critical element for, let's say, the strong, to, keeping, to keep it as a strong backbone of our economy. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And I think there's a nice quote there, digitalize or marginalize. I think it's absolutely critical. And I think your point about transition, accompaniment, advice, absolutely. Because they're running around with hardly any resources, don't know what to put first, oh, digital absolutely critically important. I wish I could talk longer with you. Do you want to just do the poll again? Should we see if anybody shifted opinion? Should we just open the poll? Where do you think Europe should invest? Because we've heard about, is it in knowledge? Is it in infrastructure? Is it in specifically climate change solutions? Should we just quickly do a poll? Why not? Because you've been very attentively listening. I didn't ask for your engagement on Slido. Can we open that? Do we have that? Is that possible before I wrap? No, I can't hear from the back. If it's not, no worries. No? I move on? I move on. Okay, so in that, ca in that case... Oh, oh, there we go. There we have it. Can you see? I have very bad eyesight. So, artificial intelligence, education, same thing across the board. Digital twins. Can anybody read the smaller stuff? Healthcare, blockchain, skills, always. Skills has gone down a bit, but education, absolutely critical. Cybersecurity is still there. Blockchain, healthcare, education. In the broadest sense, I take it, research there, just to the right, robotics. Okay, so I will ask you the same thing. You all talked about all sorts of areas, the positive, the less positive, the need for improvement. I literally mean, ladies and gents, because Claire Berry is opening an exhibition. Uh, one sentence on what these good people need to think about. Where does the focus need to be? Where should we be putting our resources? Where can we push the way forward? Last important takeaway from you, please, sir. One sentence. Uh, way of working. Have a, have, a rock way of and, working. have a rock and roll in your way of working. Have a rock and roll. Rock and roll in way of working. There you go, that's working. a nice quote. Have a rock and roll in your way of working. And that from a Finn. That's cool. Mind you, you do do the air guitar competitions, don't they? They do do the air guitar competitions, so we like that. Okay, very good. Yes, sir, Pierre. Well, for me, it's, we need really to accelerate the process from idea to go to the market. Okay, okay, excellent, thank you. Totally agree. Yes, We need Helmut. to be user-centering in our thinking. The user is Absolutely. where everything has to go to. For this, we need to integrate the stakeholders with this view yep. and, for instance, public-private partnerships, I think it's an excellent way and a proven way to do it forward. Okay. I hope it will also play a big role in Horizon Europe. 
Okay, absolutely, and I think user-centric is also how you engage them at the outset, which is a whole other huge conversation, which is challenging in itself, but critically necessary. Willem, yes, thank you. Destroy the silo thinking. Yes, I like the word post-silo you said in the startups. It's a nice, it's a nice phrase. Yes, thank you, Margareta. Thank you. It's all about execution. So it's execute, 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 not uh, just uh, talking about things, but doing. And in my view, we have won. If uh, young people, which are missing, by the way, today here in the audience, if they leave school, the first thing they want to do is become an entrepreneur. Thank you. Yep. Oh, you can have two if you like. You can mean stereophonic sound. Yes, sir, your last comment, please. Yeah, yeah we need to do all of this. Uh, I think they, uh, and uh, this comprehensive uh, way of addressing things is extremely important. Uh, we need, I think, speed in execution, very important. Uh, and uh, the not having silos totally agree. Uh, the Europe's strength is in being able to manage complexity. And I think we need to build on that uh, and make sure that we have the means to test and experiment, totally agree. It's, uh, and uh, encourage the risk taking through testing and experimentation. It's a big part of what we'll be proposing for the future. And also, I would just add from my point of view, from we talk about the US and China a lot, we talk where we're the good relation and then the poor relation, but I keep coming back to the beauty of Europe is truly in its richness and diversity. It's, it's, it's very interesting that you can learn from somewhere else to adapt and replicate. It is one of the fundamental beauties of Europe, truly. And I think we just, it's lost at the moment for all the reasons you know, but uh, it, it really is what, what makes Europe very, very strong and very, very unique. So thank you for all of those keywords. Can you please give a very warm round of applause to our fabulous opening speakers? You were great. Sorry I didn't have more time with you. Don't go for a minute because I'm going to release these good people and I only have a second. Now I'd like you to scuttle downstairs at top speed, don't break any limbs, to participate in the opening of the exhibition because Deputy Director General of DG Connect, Claire Berry, is waiting there to open the exhibition for you. Then you've got a 90 minute lunch break until two o'clock, so do tweet, do enjoy time with your peers. Then you've got all sorts of sessions. At two o'clock, you're gathering here for a 90-minute session on artificial intelligence. Then you've got a load of parallel sessions, okay? So you should know where you're going. And then, of course, in the evening at 5.30, I don't know whether you know this, ladies and gentlemen, there's a movie screening of Cold War. That is an EU-funded project. So that's a film that won a prize at Cannes, okay? So it's all go. Keep your eye on the watch. Don't be late. We need to keep things on time. Thank you very, very much for your attention and I wish you a very good next step. Thank you very much.